Hey, what's up everybody? This is a quick first impression of the Fujifilm X100S. So Nikon recently announced um, 35mm 1.8G lens that I really wanted to get for traveling. But this got me thinking, um, when I travel, usually I lug my backpack with all my camera gear, which consists of the Nikon X, uh, not X, Nikon D600, 85mm 1.8, 50mm 1.8, and 28 millimeter 1.8 and now I want to add a 35 millimeter 1.8 to the mix I was like man I wish there's a smaller camera so I looked around and Fujifilm X100S came highly recommended from pretty much like everybody which is kind of unheard of so I did my research and figured that okay um, camera's great sounds like the perfect travel camera but it is kind of pricey and luck would have it that recently one of the Amazon seller lowered the price to one uh, to ten fifty from thirteen hundred. So I jumped at the opportunity and got myself X one hundred S. So here it is. Some basic specs. This is a fixed focal length camera, a thirty five millimeter equivalent at two point oh, meaning you cannot zoom. Well, you can zoom, you can foot zoom, and um, sixteen megapixel. It has an electronic viewfinder and optical viewfinder. And I got this camera for about two weeks, so I had a chance to take portraits, take candid shots, take some street photos, take some action shots because it's been Chinese New Year. Uh, so I, I was performing line dances and also did some action shots at dimly lit area. For example, like restaurants and stuff. So I got decent sense of like how this camera works, what it does well and may not do as well and I just want to do a first first impression and I'll do a longer follow up later on. So first let's talk about the image quality. Image quality when the light is good is fantastic. It is not quite up to par as my full frame D600 yet with a prime lens on it. However, it, I'll say it's on par if not better than my D90 crop sensor camera with prime lens on it, which is it's still pretty impressive. I mean, there is a crop sensor inside this camera, but uh, with this form factor, which is almost like a point and shoot size, I think, I think it's amazing. And uh, that's really honestly nothing to pick in terms of image quality, just know that it's awesome. Um, you can blow out the background if the subject's close enough to you. And uh, I just love the focal length. So it is kind of subjective, like if you feel like you can live with a 35mm focal length then you'll love this camera, if not then you'll hate this camera, simple as that. Next one, it would be the autofocus. It is pretty bad. <laughs> uh, people say it's good, but maybe I'm just not a good photographer, you know, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not liking the autofocus. It works, sometimes, most times, yes, but like when the situation gets a little bit tricky, it struggles and it's slow. Now keep in mind that I'm comparing it to DSLR, so of course there will be um, uh, there will be a little gap. So this is something that I'm learning to get used to. To me, I feel like this camera, unless you put keep it in manual focus or like pre-focus somewhere, it's kind of difficult to get grab shots because the fo focus speed. So to me, this camera is more like you frame the shot, you plan the shot right down in all the settings and then you get a picture when you get a picture it looks awesome but for like spur of the moment thing it may be a little bit more difficult but um to combat this i plan to practice more with like manual focus and pre-focus deter like just visualize where the focus point will be and then just pick up a camera and shoot so i'll practice that and come back to this and i'll probably eat my words so, oh, also, like, in the dark, it's, uh, focus is it's just bad. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it at that. But this is my first impression of the camera in terms of focusing. Two weeks out, just two weeks. So I'll give it a little bit more time. But right now, it's, it's not as good as DSLR. All right, next up, the camera is not weather sealed, which is a shame because um, this camera strikes me as the perfect travel camera. And if it's weather sealed, it would be perfect. But because it's not weather sealed and because like when I focus, the, the lens actually comes in and out and will suck in the air which along comes with dust and sand and whatever. So I need some protection for this. 
So what I did, let me add the stuff on here, is that I bought a JCC hood. It only runs about 25 bucks. It looks pretty much the same as the OEM one, which costs about a hundred, which is ridiculous. But with this JCC hood, it comes with a filter adapter. All right, so let's screw this on first. Actually, let me take off. I'll take off this protective covering. And by the way, uh, my point of shoot camera that's recording this is running out of battery, so this video may cut out. Hopefully it won't. So there's the adapter. And with the adapter, I put on a filter. I chose the B plus W filter. It's mode decoded, meaning that there's no reflection. If you use a non-coded filter, I hear that you do get some reflection of the lens itself, which does not work. So let's put the filter on. The filter runs me about 30 if I remember right. And they make two types. This is the regular size one, comes in silver, versus a black one that's a little bit slimmer. And because I'm a, I guess I'm a vain person, <laughs> I want something that matches color, body color. So I put on the, I chose the regular size filter that comes in silver. So once I have this, this is great. I mean, normally I go out like this as well, but for extra protection, I slap on the hood and just put it on to a twist. That's it. The camera body, it's um, I mean, it's a, it's a nice size, but it's pretty slippery here. So I opt for a leather case. For the leather case, I went with the Fujifilm OEM one. It's a nice dark brown, not super hipster, but it gets the job done, which I like. And it runs about eighty dollars. And I believe right now they have a black one out as well, but I kind of like the brown one, so I went with the brown. This is this leather strap also came with the brown case. Nice thing about this case is that it has a battery opening, right? Easy access. And since we have this open, let me talk about the battery door. The battery door, standard open. However, it does not auto close like the Canon camera. It's no big deal, but um, it adds to the polish of the camera. Another bone to pick is the battery. Battery, although it has a little indentation to indicate like direction, but if you flip it around, you can still slide the whole battery in. So what's the point of this? You know, here, flip it around, battery went in anyways. So there are a couple cases where I put it in, I was like, wait a minute, why is the camera not turning on? Oh, I put the battery in backwards. So these are, these are like small polish that I feel that would add to the, well, I wouldn't say add to the camera's value, but at least it's like user experience. Sorry, I'm like a UI designer, so I'm kind of interested in user experience. So to me, I mean, these are minor details that it will add polish to the camera that I come to expect. Um, I mean, if Canon and them can do it with a point and shoot, why can't you guys? But normally this is how I travel. Kind of like this. In cases where I need to throw the camera in the back, I'll take off the hood and attach the top portion of the Fuji Fujifilm case. So, two button down here. Slide the whole thing over the camera body. It, it has a little gap right now because I have like the whole adapter on and the filter on, but it's okay. All right, gets the job done. Just like this. All right, so since the battery is running out, let me just um, try to end this first impression video real quick. Overall, um, I like this camera, but I'm kind of on the fence of it because of the learning, well, not so much learning curve, but like the limitation. I mean, coming in, I know there will be limitation because this is not a DSLR, and I know I should not expect the DSLR-like performance from this camera. However, it blows me away with the image quality. The image quality is excellent, but getting the shots, like the autofocus, um, the settings, you know how unforgiving this camera could be, it kind of put me off a little bit. So I have to learn this camera. So this is, this is I'm not calling this a review because it's just a first impression. I just had this camera for two weeks. This is a first impression video. It's, it's tough. <laughs> uh, oh, I realized I did not talk about the viewfinder at all. So they have like the optical viewfinder and electronic viewfinder. And this is the first camera with electronic viewfinder and I love it. You see the effect on screen in the eyepiece right away. Um, 
The only issue is that when you use this camera in bright sunlight, the image gets really, really dark in, a, in the electronic viewfinder. So sometimes you have to either turn on the sunlight, the sunlight mode, or you have to switch to optical viewfinder. But it does not bother me enough to kind of make a point of it. What bothers me more is the autofocus, which I will experiment more with to get a better sense of how it is. The camera for original cost of 1300s, uh, I'm not, I'm kind of on the fans of it. Uh, if you, if you're diehard street photo fans, or you love the look, or you, you, you like um, photographer's camera, I, I guess it's, this is awesome for you. Uh, for me, who is just like an amateur guy walking around want a travel camera, it is kind of like a pain in the neck, to be honest. But um, the image quality coming out of this, and the form factor, and how cool it looks, makes me definitely screams that I would keep this camera for sure like uh, but because of those three factors I will keep this camera and I'll try harder to learn how to use fo uh, the autofocus properly or heck learn how to use manual focus better it is to me a camera that can that go for you shoot like plan shots with this camera but uh, I do see great street photos coming out of this camera and this fo camera frankly kind of is kind of built for a street photo so I will learn it and I'll hopefully do an update video later to see how my mind changes. And uh, I would love to hear your experience with the X100S. So if you have this camera or the X100, feel free to comment and let me know. Or if you have some tricks on how, how you use autofocus or use the focus better or any tips for me, please let me know as well. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave in the comments. I'm sure me or other people who have this camera or have more experience than me will chime in and let you know. All right, well, hope this Hope this review was helpful and informative. And um, I'm glad I got this done before the battery runs out. So I'll see you guys later.